Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play of Kanche, the second turn. So, recently I've been in, I've been looking for a visual novel to play, like, not just any visual novel, but a really good one at that. Like, and I don't mean a visual novel like Pizza More. <laughs> no, no. I wanted to play a good visual novel, it's been a long time since I've played any. And... So I've been looking and came across this. Can't say, the second turn. Now you might be saying, why the second turn? Is this the second installment of a franchise or something? Not exactly. Can't say is the second game made by these developers. They made three games. Um, Jisei, Can't say, and Yose, I think. Yeah. And I came across this first. I don't think any of the games have any relation to each other. Like, that each. Each of them are their own independent story, so it's not like, this is not a sequel or anything. And yeah, the game picks up my interest. So you play as a teenager who has the ability to live out the death of corpses. So you can touch, I guess you touch dead corpses and you can see how they die. And so this is a mystery, no a mystery visual novel. Try and you're trying to solve a murder. And I guess you, and also apparently you're working with other, with other teenagers who have abilities, their own abilities, but they are dangerous or something? I don't know. I haven't played this game yet, but it seemed interesting, so I wanted to play it. So yeah, let's check the options menu first. Window, full screen, of course, text speed. The text speed was really low when I first started up the game. I increased it a bit, but we'll see how the text speed is. Transitions, so after choices, uh, and then volume. As always, I reduced the volume a bit, but the volume doesn't seem to be that loud when I did a test record, so it seems fine. Yeah, so depending whether how much I like this game, I might actually get and play the other two games, which is I think GC and Yoshi. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin, shall we? A tangram isn't that hard. You're just not thinking about it right. You need to be wait, more wait. flexible. You should be open to the idea. The outside shape doesn't always give you a good idea. Hold up. Hold up. That's... That's... Get... Wait, hold on. Auto forward. I thought I turned it off. Yeah, there's an auto forward. Is this... Why is there a slider for auto forward? Anyway, so... Does this mean off or on? Let's try to put it up max and see how it works. Um, return. Oh. So that's what... That is so confusing. Alright, let's start that again. You would think... I mean... You would think that if you push down the order for it, you turn it off. Not... Ma make it max. So, anyway... Turn off order for it. So I guess this is yours? This thing is impossible. Oh wait, no, you I I look like a kid, so I shouldn't not a kid like a teenager of course. But from the title from the screen he looked like a pretty mature guy actually. If that is even him, I don't think that's him, maybe. Maybe that's not even him. Alright. This thing is impossible. A tangram isn't that hard. You're just not thinking about it right. Oh yeah? So how exactly am I supposed to think about it? Mm, the voice? You need to be more flexible. It's actually alright. The voice acting is actually um not bad. That's surprising. I don't know whether I should leave voice acting. On I mean the voice on or off. I know. Might be easier for me if I just leave it off, but just let, let me know in the comments what you think. If I if you want to hear the voices or you rather do rather me do the voices. But for you should be open to the idea that what looks like one thing might just be a small part of something completely different. Yeah. So let me know in the comments what you think. I think for now I'll just leave the voices on. I mean it seems fine. The outside shape doesn't always give you a good idea of what's inside. You mean like how my tiny little sister is such a huge genius? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. No, I wouldn't say that. Who on earth invented this thing anyway? It's such a weird puzzle. Well, I think the 
that according to legend, the Tangram happened when someone dropped a square tile and it broke into seven pieces. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, and I think this is a mystery this is a mystery visual novel and I think it's a hybrid of some sort. Like you can actually do that's there's actually some gameplay to it. Kinda like long live the queen, I guess. When he tried to put him back together, he discovered that he could shape it into many different things. Oh. So basically we're having fun at the expense of some poor guy who broke his tile. Well, if it weren't for that, wouldn't the tile just be a boring tile like all the other tiles? But because of what happened, it's now a famous puzzle that's been seen across the world. Um, I played, I mean I did this before but I wouldn't say it's... Sometimes, in order to find a greater purpose, you have to be broken first. That sounds... That could be taken in a completely different way like... Literally, as in a human being, broken huh? I think I'm happier just being a boring old tile that no one will ever notice. I don't think we get the luxury of choosing what happens to us. Yeah. You don't think we get to decide our future? I never said that. We don't get to decide what happens to us, but we can always decide how to respond to it. Yeah, that's true. I... You know, you should think a lot of deep stuff for a 14 year old. Hey, I do too. I thought... Well, I'm 18, but when I was 14, I was just doing things or something. I thought girls your age were supposed to be into cute guys or nail polish. That's a stereotype and you know it. Why, well, I'm not like, I'm not allowed to tease you? Besides, I'm sure you start thinking about a boy one day. And when that day comes, you better make sure he gets my approval first. I don't want to lose my sister to some punk kid who's no good. you I'm not interested in that sort of thing don't worry you're not going to lose me anytime soon the way she says that makes me feel like she's gonna die oh that was a weird transition Charlie went all black and red Ugh. where am I I open my eyes slowly and take in my surroundings coffee table books computer Looks like a pretty average apartment. Something feels off though. Good morning. Is that her? Alright. Oh, I think that was when we were kids, now we're grown up. Oh, then can I give him the mature voice now? Well, I want to see his face first. It's not an apartment, it's prison. All thanks to my sticking all thanks to me sticking my nose into a murder yesterday. How do you got how do you do that? I hope you slept well. Oh. He still looks somewhat like a kid. I think in the title screen he has a moustache. Like, yeah. Why do you care? Aki sits beside me on the couch. You're our guest after all. Wait, I'm a guest? Is this my sister or what? Except for the part where I don't want to be here. Well, there's not much I can do about that. You have to admit it's a lot nicer than police custody though. I don't see why Detective Gersky thought it was necessary to detain me anyway. You know... It feels kind of weird. Normally I just do the voice acting for both sides, but now I feel like I'm trying to talk to her. Because <laughs> she has her own voice, so I don't do her voice, but yeah. I already saw the murder yesterday. The murderer even confessed. Confessions can be recanted. It's best to have the most solid case possible in situations like this. Why am- Anyway, am I a detective or something? How do I get involved in that murder cases in the, the light? What about Naoki? He was there, why not use him? I'm sure they'll use my brother too, but the fact remains that you're the one who solved the case. That makes you the strongest witness they have. Um, what does solving the case have to do with being a witness? Am I a witness? I roll my eyes. Whatever, there's plenty of painfully obvious evidence at the scene already. You hardly need me. You'd be surprised what expensive lawyers are capable of doing. We need the most airtight case possible. Miko might seem like a relaxed guy, but he's thorough. Miko? You mean Detective Gursky? Yeah, Miko Laj Gursky. That's a weird... Oh, I guess it's not that weird. You seem awfully familiar with him. You think so? Is this my sister or what? Her expression breaks into a white grin. I can only assume that's your story here that she's not telling me. Anyway, you should thank me for convincing him to let you stay with us. 
With us, you get a nice bed, good food, and... Aki, I got the coffee. Oh, is that... Are those the two... The... Wait, I can't even... I think this is a guy, but it's hard to tell. Naoki opens the door to the apartment, triumphantly holding up a cup of coffee. I think I I stated earlier in one of the sentences that Naoki was a he, so it's a guy. Alright. Coffee. So are these the two we saw in the flashback? Uh -uh. Naoki stumbles as he enters, grasping yeah, as he enters. Grasping the air at the air in an attempt to catch himself. A young girl with pale skin and white hair appears from the hallway and reaches out, calmly lifting the coffee cup from his outstretched hand as he falls forward. She steps to the side as Naoki goes crashing to the ground. <laughs> the girl gazes placidly at Naoki lying on the floor. Be careful. Oh. Ooh, nice save. The young girl nods and hands the cup of coffee to me before disappearing in back into the hallway. Who is that? Yeah. That's Lee Mei. Uh huh. I saw her yesterday, but she was just, but she just kind of nodded at me and walked off. Now he stands and rubs his head ruefully. That's Lee Mei for you. She's a quiet child. Hmm, quiet child. Quiet? Eh. Anyway. There's too much going on in her head, so it's a little hard on her to maintain conversations. What? She's like a genius kid or something? Naoki and Aki... Naoki and Aki exchange glances. What did I say? Not exactly. It's a little more complicated than that. Why don't we talk about it on the way there? There? Where are we going? To speak with our client, of course. So I think we're a detective of some sort. Trying solving murder cases and the like. It doesn't take long for us to leave Edgewater. I gaze sleepily out of the car, out the car window and struggle to sit up straight in my seat. It's still early morning, and the city is only faintly outlined against this pale sky. I take a few sips of my coffee before dozing off completely. Huh. I know this anim animation looks, but I guess it's a nice thing. This, the quality of this visual novel is not so bad actually. Although there's like bugs on the side, but I guess that's just the visual novel engine they're running on. It's, you have to get used to that if you play visual novels. Ah, uh, what? The cityscape outside the car has transformed into a country scene. I vaguely remember passing the big city, but I'm pretty sure I fell asleep after that. Typical. I gaze at the rolling countryside as it passes by. All I can see, all I see are clusters of trees. Within with telephone poles dotting the side of the road. Aki's driving is surprisingly sedated, considering her personality. I expected her a lot- I expected a lot more road rage. What kind of person is Aki? She seems content to chug, to chug along slightly below the speed limit, even though the road is perfectly straight and no other cars are inside. I feel like we are creeping along at an incredibly slow pace. I guess this is why we had to leave early. At least I get to sit in the front. Glancing in the back seat, I see Naoki dozing, his head resting on his chest. So, Li Mei is awake, but she's staring blankly out the window. Glad you're awake. Did you enjoy your sleep? No, not particularly. The seat feels lumpy and now my neck hurts. Aki laughs and shakes her head. <laughs> At least you're honest. Should we have gotten you something stronger than a triple shot? No, it's not your fault. It'll kick in soon enough. What did I take? I took a look out the window again trying to focus on the scenery. It looks like we're far away from the city by now. Any reason we had to leave so early? We have a long way to go to meet with our client and he's the sort of guy who will get very fussy if we're late. Where are we going anyway? What are we, su what are we supposed to be doing? Who's the client you're talking about? Wait, you said you were going to tell me about the maid, didn't you? You're overflowing with questions. Yeah. I suppose I can't blame you. I just asked four questions in a row. I was like, that's that would be weird. You're not the only one with questions though. In fact, you're a pretty big question mark yourself. Oh? Let's make a deal, shall we? You ask a question, then I ask a question. We'll trade answers. Alright, but I'm not sure how I'm gonna answer since I know practically nothing about myself. I guess that works. 
Who are you people anyway? Where are we going? Yeah, who are you people anyway? You work for high profile corporations like corporations like Orton Engineering that the police seem to trust you almost unconditionally. So I guess they're detectives. But you just look like a bunch of kids. I keep burst out laughing. <laughs> You're a kid too, aren't you? Yeah, well. We're a special investigation agency. Ah, uh, I guess this much. Our work isn't always as exciting as corporate espionage and murder. More often than not, we're just snapping photos of cheating lovers. Heh. <laughs> that's more like a private eye. As for why the police trust us, that's sort of a weird story. That's for another question, though. Uh huh. Okay, my turn. What's your name? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. You do realize how suspicious it makes you look when you hide it, right? Yeah, I, my name has been question marks this whole time. Do I get to name him? It's complicated. Things are only as complicated as you want them to be, but I respect your privacy. What? Sure, I didn't answer a question. The girl who can insert, the girl who can insert thoughts into my head whenever she wants respects my privacy. Ironic. We're going to have to call you something though. Is Kangai okay? Kangai? Roughly translated, it means strong emotions. It's sort of a play on Kansei. Ah, the title of the game. Is that supposed to mean something to me? We call the ability to feel other people's emotions Kansei. It's like a super sensitivity. Uh huh. Since you have a type of Kansei, we can call you Kangai. Kan. Guy. Get it? Um. Alright. Yeah, it's pretty stupid. I never claim to be good at picking names. Try to think of something else, please. I'll see what I can do. I lean back in my seat and adjust myself, attempting to get comfortable. Is there any reason your car is so tiny? Is that your next question? No, I'm just saying that there's not much space here. Lee May never complained about it. She hardly talks. Yeah, well, Lee May is tiny. Oh yeah, what's the deal with her anyway? Now that's definitely a new question. Yeah, right. Where are we going? She wants to deal with Limei. What? Do you have... Uh... I wanna ask all the questions, but... I mean, we're gonna find out where we're gonna go anyway once you reach there, so no point wasting on that. She wants to deal with Limei. Kinda wanna ask that. I wanna know more about this. What did you have to do to get the police to trust you? We stopped the assassination of a visiting dignitary. What? You what? Yeah. Everyone makes a big deal about it, but it was sort of a fluke. How? Naoki was trailing a businessman and secretary who were uh, <clears throat> putting in extra hours at an expensive hotel. Uh-huh. And? He saw the assassin, thought it was suspicious, and called me in. We intercepted the assassin, saved the day, and apparently that makes us trustworthy heroes. Seriously? Seriously. You'll forgive me if I find that hard to believe. A story like that is ridiculous. Not really. So, you're the boy with a concept that allows you to experience the final moments of any dead body you touch. Yeah. You should be used to the ridiculous by now. Yeah. I guess she has a point there. It still doesn't sound like a real story though. Alright, next question. Where are you from anyway? Um, Los Angeles. We're in America? I'd rather you don't lie about it. Oh, she saw it to it. Well, I guess you're a bad liar. What? Miko told me about it. Yesterday, you told him that you were from LA, but when he asked you about precincts, he didn't correct him. In Los Angeles, police work districts, not precincts. Uh. I'm surprised he didn't cuff you on the spot for lying to him. Actually, no I'm not. I turned my gaze back to the scenery outside, unsure of how to answer. Detective Ghosty knew I was lying yesterday. So... Wait. Why am I being all secretive? Like, why am I, a fugitive or something? Why did he let me get away with it? Did he recognize me? I don't remember him though. I've been living in Los Angeles for the past 3 years. Isn't that good enough? And before that? Only one question at a time, remember? Aki raises an eyebrow. Of course. Go ahead. I've been really bad at answering a question while she answers my questions. So yeah, she wants to deal with Lin anyway. Although you said that... You said there was a lot going on in her head. All of us have a sort of Kansei like you do. We can all sense thoughts and feelings to some extent. Yeah. And? Li Mei's Kansei is probably the purest form of them all. Uh. She experiences the emotions of everyone around her. Oh. Everyone? Everyone. 
If you're happy, she's happy. If you're sad, she's sad. Wait, she experienced it? Oh, so she actually, her emotion is based on our emotions. Everyone else's emotions are constantly streaming into her mind. She has to spend a lot of her energy sorting out which feelings are hers and which aren't. Oh. I turn to look at Lime. Her eyes are open and her body is unmoving as she stares out straight out the car window. I guess that's why she's more, she's so, she seems emotionless because she's like having so much emotion that she just decides to have a straight face. Her mind must be a mess. I wonder if she can feel my pity for her. Can she even tell that it's me? Or is it all mixed up inside of her? No oh man, should I even be feeling this way? If she can sense it, it's probably really demeaning to her that I'm feeling bad for her. I don't want her to think that I'm, I think of her as a poor little kid or something. I desperately try to conjure up another emotion to squash my current mood, but my mind is completely blank. For a brief moment, Limi glances at me from the corner of her eye. She nods slowly, almost imperceptibly, but I think she's trying to tell me she's okay. My turn now. Aki grins. Where did you live before Los Angeles? Somehow I knew you were going to ask that. Oh, am I really that predictable? Not going to answer? Edgewater. What? I used to live here in Edgewater. Here? Aki sounds surprised. Three years. I suppose that makes sense. We've only been here for two years. She glances at me off the corner of her eye. I'm sure she wants to ask more, but for once she doesn't press the issue. Well, I guess that was my question. Your turn. Oh, so I can ask all of them. Alright, cool. Where are we going? A small estate out in the countryside. It belongs to one Mr. William Otten. Will Otten? As in Otten Engineering? Got it in one. So he's the guy who hired you to track Sarah Blackmore because she was stealing information from him? Yep. Well, until she was murdered, that is. Yeah, there is that. We reported to him yesterday about what happened. You mean about how Miss Bergstrom hired Sarah to steal from him? That and the fact that Miss Bergstrom claimed the third party was also interested in the information. He didn't sound too happy about that, so he ordered us to come see him today and give a full report in person. Wow, that's a little demanding. I can't blame him. His entire company is at stake here. I hope you don't mind coming with us. Since you were there yesterday, it seems only natural to bring you along. How did I met these people anyway? Yeah, I get it. I'm sure the real reason she's taking me along is because she promised Detective Kirsty that she'd keep an eye on me. But I guess I don't mind talking to this Orton guy. It's not like I had any plans for today anyway, and it might be interesting to see the house of a millionaire. Why does Mr. Orton live so far out of the way anyway? Considering that his company is in the middle of Edgewater, wouldn't it make more sense not to live a gazillion miles from the place? Who knows? Word is that he really hates the city. His assistant said that he rarely leaves his house, conducting most meetings via satellite. Weird. His entire company is built on cutting-edge technology, but he doesn't want to live around a couple stoplights? Aki shrugs. Rich people are eccentric. Comes with a job description, I think. Sounds more like paranoia to me. Maybe it is. You missed it. I jumped a little as Limi speaks up from the back seat. She's been silent for so long, I almost forgot she was there. They may pointing at a small side road that we just passed. Oops! Oh. I could give the steering wheel a tight spin and the car screech as the car spins in the road. What? Ow! Naoki jerks away as his head bumps against the window he was using for a headrest. Sorry, missed the turn. He rubs his head slowly. Yeah, I noticed. I guess we're almost there? Yep, just a few minutes now. Oh. Anyway, what were we talking about? Right, Mr. Otten. He's one of those self-made men you hear about all the time, built Otten Engineering himself from the ground up. But he's also ridiculously secretive. No interviews, hardly any TV appearances. His assistant, Sophia Millerson, does most of that. The car slows to a stop as we approach Mr. Otten's house. I squint out the window to get a better look at it. It looks like a big white box sitting in the middle of nowhere. This texture looks weird for the this white wall texture. I know it feels out of place. Then again, the background over there feels out of place as well. Not much of a house if you ask me. 
This is it. This is it. But it looks like a giant box with doors and windows. Yeah, it kind of does. I guess since he always stays inside, he doesn't care what it looks like on the outside. Aki kicks open the car door and leaps out. The front doors of the house swing open silently, and a strict-looking woman approaches us. Are you the representatives from the agency? Yep, I'm Aki Mizutani. You must be Sophia Millerson. We spoke on the phone. Aki thrusts her hand out, but the woman merely raises a skeptical eyebrow. You're not exactly what I pictured. Looking at Aki's wrinkled shirt and dusty pants, I can see why she might be a little thrown off. Being a private investigator involves having an appearance that doesn't stand out, ma'am. Hmm. Truly. The woman places her hands on her hips and sighs reluctantly. Well, come in. Mr. Rotten seems unusually eager to speak with you. Aki kicks the car door shut and motions for us to follow her. I climb out and stumble for a moment as my knees buckle underneath my weight. Ugh, my legs are cramped from sitting in that car for so long. Sophia watches me impassively, she doesn't look impressed. Naoki comes stumbling out of the car right after me. And we both do our best not to look like a pair of goldfish who have been dumped unceremoniously out of the, our bowl. Are these your associates? If she was unimpressed before, she's plain worried now. I can't say I blame her. They are. Aki steps to the side and Naoki and Lime approach Sophia. This is Lime and this is my brother Naoki. Lime glides up to Sophia like a swan and offers her a polite bow. And he is? Sophia points at me. Aki stares at me and a hint of panic shows in her eyes. I've already made it clear that I don't intend to give my name any away, but I guess that puts me her in a somewhat difficult situation. That would be... Kangai. What? <laughs> Kangai? She really is going to stick with that weird name? Kangai? Unusual. I turn to Aki and make a face, but Sophia either doesn't notice or care. Aki shrugs apologetically. Sorry, it's the best I could do on short notice. He should have given me something to work with. Wait, does she have telepathy? I shall, I'm surely regretting not telling her my name. Was Fred or something. <laughs> I guess it's better than nothing. Oh god, Fred. Not that it's a bad name, but it's so generic. It's like saying Bob. As we follow Sophia into the house, I see a brief flash of red light. What's that light? It's a retina detector. Oh, Sophia indicates a small camera set in the door frame that we pass through. The house takes a shot of the eyes of anyone who passes through. It's useful for identification purposes. Yeah. There are other sensors around the house that also capture your retina image. The house can remember your preferences and adjust things like lighting and temperature as soon as you enter the room. Huh. Whoa, that's more than a little creepy. I know, I think it's a bit cool. But I thought Mr. Orton lived out here because he didn't like technology. Mr. Orton lives here because he enjoys the peace and quiet being away from the city affords him. Yeah, I, I think he... It's not that he doesn't like technology, he just doesn't like the city, the urban, the population, the crowds. You know, I can understand that. This house, however, has the most cutting-edge security possible, including quite a few innovations not yet available on the market. Alright, but I think this is a good place to end it, so leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you again in the next episode.